Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Director of Wet Friction and Surface Technology Programs, Dr. Rashid Farhadi. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank you all for attending this presentation, especially right after lunch. I know it is very difficult to go to presentation after lunch, especially a topic like friction. I'm sure it is scheduled purposely to let you take a nap, be fresh for next topic. But trust me, it's not as bad as it sounds. Let me explain what I want to talk to you about today. In any, many application, like automotive, in some area we want to reduce friction, and in other, we want to control friction or increase friction. Today, I'm going to talk about both of them. First, in friction material, I'm going to talk to you about how friction material works and how can we design it. Like Patrick said, we want to show it's not black box, it's science. So I'm going to show you our trick to making hot friction material. At the end, surface technology, I want to tell you how we can bring friction coefficient low. Now, um, I start friction material with a quote from um, 1,700 years ago, Timetius uh, said about the friction law. He said it is easier to move a moving body than to move a body at stop, at the rest. In other words, dynamic friction is lower than static friction. Now, we don't need a scientist to tell us about this one. Even from childhood, we had this experience. When we wanted to move a box on the floor, at the beginning, it's very difficult. As soon as it breaks away, it's easy to move. Now, keep this in mind. That's going to be our challenge to design a good friction coefficient, friction material for clutch application. So most of the friction, most material, if we measure friction coefficient over the speed, they're going to act like the red curve. At low speed, it's high. When it comes lower speed, it's low. In other words, gradient is negative. This performance is not working in clutch application. I'm going to show you why it's not working in next slide. What we need, we need a positive friction coefficient over the speed. Now, why red one is bad? Everyone knows it's bad. If you look at this box on the conveyor, if friction coefficient is negative between box and conveyor, when conveyor is moved, the box is going to move to the left, right side until spring stops. But at this point, if conveyors keep going, the friction coefficient from static is going to change to dynamic because there is a relative speed. Now, since dynamic is lower, spring load is going to move the box to the left side. This and the box is going to stop again, and dynamic friction changing to static. And one more time, box is going to move with conveyor to the right. This is going to take forever. This vibration, this unpleasant vibration in automotive called shudder. This is our worst failure mode in vehicle. We don't want to have this one. Now, <clears throat> If this vibration happens, I know our customer, driver, they can feel vibration in the vehicle, and they don't like it. They return the vehicle. Now imagine friction coefficient is positive. What would happen to this box? Again, like before, it's going to move to the right side until it stops, like before. Now if we break away the surface speed, since dynamic is higher, the box is going to move a little bit more to the right side, and it stops right there. Done. That is smooth transition. That's what we want in the clutch application. Makes everyone happy, smooth. So this is the performance, what we want to make it. Now, everyone say, hey, I know that one. I knew it already. Negative, bad, red one is bad, green one is good. But 
how can we make this red one existing material and make it positive? That's, that's what I want to know. So let's talk about that one. In order to make this one, I want to make it simplify. I make it in two separate zones, speed zone. In one meter, second, one meter per second speed, in higher than that, we call it high speed, and in lower, we call it low speed zone. Because material, they do different behavior in this speed zone. And now, we call it low speed and high speed. I define three knobs, control knobs, which we have as a designer to control to bring the negative to positive. First, we are doing with molecular interaction between friction modifier in the oil and our friction material. We can control this to bring the lower speed down, like we want. What about the second knob? Second knob is our material. We want to make it porous. In order to, when we make it porous, we avoid hydroplaning and we make the higher speed up. Now it looks like positive, but we have another knob. This knob is controlling the filler material inside the friction material. We can increase friction coefficient high. We can increase it higher. Now, everyone say, hey, still you didn't convince me. Uh, what about this? How these knobs is working? Let me work this. Let me go pull all this one and explain it one by one. The first, I want to talk about the friction modifier molecular interaction with friction material. In next slide, I have, I introduce fatty acid, organic fatty acid, which is, is used in centuries and even from Stonehenge when they wanted to grease those Flintstone car, they used the uh, organic fatty acid. This organic fatty acid, like you see here, <clears throat> there are 18 carbon chain lengths. And here I put it three separate shapes on temperature for same 18 carbon length. On the right side, you can see stearic acid. As you can see, all carbon is saturated with hydrogen. We call it hydrogenate. We can find this fatty acid in McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts. I heard New York and um, California state, they banned out of the fast food, but in Ohio and Detroit, we are safe. <laughs> now, in oleic acid, we have one carbon is not bonded, saturated. It makes a little bit kink. In linoleic acid, there are two carbon is not saturated with hydrogen. It makes it curve. This oil, we, find, we get it from the uh, vegetable oil. Um, you can find it from corn oil and soybean oil. Now, how they are working in our system? Uh, let's look at this one. When stearic acid, they are in the base oil, and they go to the system, and they stick to any polar system in our transmission or clutches. Stearic acid, because they are straight, they can pack very tight to each other. And also, since they are so close to each other, they can make another bond with the next tail. That's why you can find that there's, they are solid in room temperature. You can see it, fatty acid in kitchen, it's all like butter. Now, uh, oleic acid, it comes here, it takes more real estate because of the tail is thing, and linoleic acid, because it's very bended, and the tail is spinning, is taking more real estate than the other one. In other words, next, in other words, linoleic acid is taking more real estate. They don't let the other one get close to them. They kick it out, so only you can find few close to each other. That's why even in refrigerator temperature, they are liquid. Now, now we know about this fatty acid, how they are working, how do they uh, work in system. This sticking to two surfaces, moving surface, and they making a brushing effect. As you can see, 
They move and they make it a brushing effect. Like when we brush the straight head, at the beginning it's easy to move. The faster you go, it's higher. This, we call it brushing effect. Steric acid, they are doing a very nice job. What about linoleic acid? Since they are not as dense as the stereoacid and they have a kink one, the friction coefficient on lower speed is not as good as the other one. They tangle to each other. Even they rip the tail. You can see it, they rip a tail. And they are not high dense. So if I put the performance, real performance on dyno, on side by side, this is a real dyno measurement with this performance. As you can see, the green one, steric acid, is beautiful, is nice. In low speed, is low friction by increasing the speed, increasing, but the red one, linoleic, is not good. Now, how can we remember which one is good, which one is not? Just remember, whenever your car starts to shut their transmission, stop by any McDonald's, get one teaspoon of French fries oil, add it in transmission, it's gonna be good. <laughs> but you can't do it in New York and California. In Ohio and Michigan, you can go any McDonald's and get this fatty acid. Now, next, this is the, that was the first knob. Next knob, we talk about the permimeter. Like, like grooves in the rain, uh, in the tire, helps from avoiding getting tire to hydroplaning zoo, zone and lose the friction. Friction material also designed to be porous, to be avoid, to avoid any hydrodynamic. So if we look closely on the surface material, we can see they are designed with different type of the feelers, fibers, and they make it, we, depends of the length and type, we can make them porous. Even if we look more closely, we can see there is some kind of feelers there inside. That are the third uh, knobs we can design. If you remember, with this knob, we can increase the dynamic friction coefficient by designing right feelers. Now, let me put the real measurement. This is real measurement, it's not cartoon. This performance is existing friction material. Very nice, very good. With third knob, with designing a new good, new good feelers, we could increase friction coefficient 18% higher. Just remember, increasing Lower speed friction coefficient is not difficult. As a matter of fact, it's already high. We are bringing low. The challenge to increase the higher, the dynamic friction coefficient, higher and keep it positive. We designed these feelers to work with some modifier in oil, and even we could increase it to 36% higher. I'm very excited about this friction material. This is new product. We just tested last month in our lab. And just imagine if designer, they want to design a new clutch pack with 36% higher friction coefficient. How much you can make it smaller? Now that, um, now that we know about this one, let me finish my surface technology with the going through the history of the Scheffler friction material. We are not new in this business. Since 1986, we were bonding friction material. 2004, we started developing our own friction material in-house. In 2009, we started our production. And 2016, as Thomas explained before launch, we made, invented the clean zero contamination bonding, which eliminate sandblasting, dirty uh, material for bonding. And as far as I know, we have IP on this one. Nobody else can do this one. And now we are more than 40 million parts in production, and we keep going on. We just um, launched K0 clutch pack for hybrid application, and in two years, we are launching friction material for double clutch application. Now, I'd like to start my surface technology subject with a quote from Ernst um, Wolf. 
Wolf Ernst. He said, God made the bulk surfaces were invented by the devil. In order to cover devil's mess, we, we created our own coding portfolio, toolbox. With Corotech family, we can code against corrosion. With Dorotech, we do anti-wear surface coating. And with the triander, which I'm getting back to this one, we reduce friction on the surface. Also, we have Sensotech, which we code sensor on the part to measure load. I get that to the next page. And we have Insotech, which is very helpful for electro application, e-mobility. We insulate any parts in electronic application, electronic application. In Sensotech, right now is very popular for this gun autonomous car and electric car, we need to know what's happening in the parts, how much load, how much torque they can see. We, not, we are not sticking strain gauge. We are not gluing anything. We are coating parts, and the parts became a strain gauge by itself. This coating is very strong against any harsh environment, moisture, oil, acid, that lasts forever. We can measure torque, we can measure truss loading. In this kind of age, you need this kind of information from your part. Now, in the Insotech, as you know, in the immobility and any kind of the thing, you need to get, uh, you need to make it insulated against current, electric. Otherwise, the current, the electric, it makes shock and make it some surface damage like floating and damage the surface, as you can see it here. Now, let me go back to the friction again. We have triander family. This one is reducing friction coefficient by making a thin layer of diamond-like carbon, DLC, on top of the surface and make friction coefficient low. This layer is very thin, couple of micron, and you don't need to change size of your product. You can use it as the same as it. Now, since it's almost international, uh, international uh, universe comparison, when they want to compare something thin, they want to compare it to a one hair, the one hair of the human. In that case, I have to put a hair right beside the thin layer, and you can see how thin is that DLC coding. We can practically, we can code the hair the surface of the hair, a part like that one. Now, the friction coefficient on DLC in, in oil, we can make it 0 0.02, 0 0.03, very low. And how can we make that one? Like friction material I just talked to you about, we design surface to attract a good friction modifier straight on the surface and lower friction. And also, in some cases, we design in higher pressure, some of the molecule in higher pressure, they tangle to each other because of their shape, and they make a, a, a molecule-sized ball. It's 4D angstrom. I, sorry, I cannot compare to any size which we know. It's just I let you know that the molecule fatty acid is about 20 angstrom. So it's about two or three times bigger than the molecule. With this ball, they work like a ball bearing between two surfaces and make friction, friction coefficient even lower. That's why we can make it to 0.02 and 0.03. How low is 0.02 and 0.03? A bar of soap, a wet bar of soap, when you be using a shower or washing, the friction coefficient is 0.05. 053. This is half of that one. I can't even imagine. It's very slippery. Now, I like to finish my presentation by this summary. I know in many applications, you need to reduce your friction. And in some applications, 
you need to control, and in some application you need to hire. In all cases, we make friction work for you. Thanks again for attending this presentation. Thank you, Rashid. Thank you. Well, it was a very great and, uh, I guess, tasty presentation. I saw <laughs> out there uh, in the showroom, you have also a little display with little samples. I didn't see oh, the yeah. spoon yet, but I think you can taste them there if you want. Yeah, the fatty kind acid. Of fatty acid. So uh, with this, um, let's uh, now, since I to told you guys a joke, we're behind already, so I shouldn't have done that. So let's have a few quick questions here. Um, are you willing to work with a customer to create a specific friction material for their specific need? Yeah, I, this is a very good question. I wanted to explain the whole point of this presentation. We are not a manufacturing just randomly put something together and make friction material. We know how to design it, and we like to work with your customer for your next generation. Any application you need, we can work with you. As a matter of fact, since last 10 years, we are working with all additive manufacturing, like Lubrizol, Infinium, Afton. We are working with them to make the stronger package for your customer. Yes, we like to work with you guys, be partner to make next generation friction material. I guess that makes really sense if you work together with oil and friction material and with the system, that really helps. Let's go to the next one. The second question we got here on the screen is, what does your next generation friction material look like? It didn't say taste like, look like. So. <laughs> taste like McDonald's, but look like <laughs> is uh, actually one of the things I'm very excited that the friction coefficient, uh, with the third knob, we can increase friction coefficient uh, as much as 36% by help of the additives. Um, I can say, depends on the customer, what they need, we can tailor, but there is a, one new material is coming soon, which is anti-glazing. We design it wear control and make it anti-glazing. One other question here from the app, what is the status of the torque sensor? Um, this sensor take we saw, um, right now we have a lot of demand Actually, we are in production for two applications. One is bicycle, another one is wheel bearing. In bicycle, you can monitor your torque when you're paddling. We have the real parts outside. We can demo and we can show it to you. And then many customers, they ask, they can put it in input shaft, the measure torque. Then here's another question. Is the surface sensor tech developed in the Wooster lab? It does not in Wooster lab, but we support in Wooster. Herzogenara in Germany, we have over there the main group working, but we have scientists in Wooster lab, we support it. All right, very good. So with this, I think we come to the end of your presentation. Thank you very much, Rashid. Very, very interesting presentation. Thank you.